Um, we just brought the garden car back on Monday, so she's back on the street. Uh, the grass was looking great, and then people started sitting on it again, so that's okay. <laughs> that's what it's for. Um, so the bicycle is my key to the city. That's how I got here today. Uh, did anybody else ride here? Show of hands. Okay, we got one, two, three, four. all right. We got some, that's good, right on. Hi, Rafi. <laughs> Um, so, like many people these days, I have multiple jobs. I have to carry my tech and my tools on my bike from meeting to social engagement to photo shoot. And I just don't think I could do everything that I do in a day if I didn't have a bike. It does all the heavy lifting for me and I, I can go on whatever route suits my task list for the day I'm not waiting for transit or stuck in traffic. Oh, there's always free parking at my destination as well, which of course doesn't hurt. So a bicycle's been part of my life for as long as I can remember, but I had no idea that it would become such an integral part of my eclectic career. Um, cycling expert wasn't exactly on the list of things to be when you grow up. Um, I got a feel for the bike on the back of my dad's bike in the kid's seat, and by 33 I was the founding AD of our, our city's first citywide cycling advocacy organization. And of course by 37 I'd written this book for bike curious North Americans about everything you need to know for riding a bike in the city. Um, throughout my teenage years, I rode to and from high school and to my summer job teaching sailing. But what some people might not realize is that I was primarily a driver in my early 20s. I hardly touched my bike at all during that period. Um, while I do miss singing at the top of my lungs in my mobile living room, I don't miss any of the other stress that came along with it. I sold my car in 2000 and used it to, uh, the money to pay for part of my postgraduate studies. It hasn't occurred to me to buy a car since then, and I've built my life in such a way that it shouldn't have to. Um, my bicycle is reliable, efficient, I ride it pretty much everywhere I go in any weather, and I can't imagine my life without it. I should say that I also mix it with transit, uh, going from, if I have to go north or east or west ends of the city and it's a longer distance, that's one of the great things is that you can, you can blend those modes. So, who in the room rides for recreation? Uh, weekend, sort of long distance, maybe mountain biking, yeah? Yeah, so you've ridden a bike. So you guys, you guys understand the joy of, of riding a bicycle. For those of you that haven't ridden in a while or are thinking about getting back onto your bikes, I'm here to give you a little nudge today. Myself and many others have had this key to the city for a long time and I'd like to share it with you. So, unless you really haven't been paying attention, you've noticed that there are far more bicycles in the city, that ridership is up. There's just bikes everywhere. Um, and there's plenty of good reasons for this. Besides the weather, what is one of the most talked about aspects of life in the city? <coughs> Traffic. Ha! So people are wasting buckets of time stuck in their cars um, and you know, their health is declining because of the amount of time sort of sitting idly either at work or getting places. That's not much fun. But wait, there's a solution. And it's been around for longer than the automobile. There we go. Uh, not since the 1890s have bicycles been this popular. And it's not just because people are tired of being st stuck in traffic. And of course, you're not actually stuck in traffic. You are traffic, right, when you're in a car? We don't like to think of that, but it's true. Um, but riding a bike is fun and easy exercise. It gets you where you need to go. It's super efficient and reliable. It's good for your mental and physical health, and it's good for the planet. What's not to love about that? I might, it might be old technology, but it offers a great way to combat so many of the issues of our time. Now, I'm not suggesting that a bicycle is the right solution for everybody all the time, but more people, riding, more people can be riding a bike more often. And more people on bicycles means fewer people in that long line of traffic in front of you, as well as a bit of relief from overburden or for overburdened uh, pardon me, transit systems, right? We've been a little bit behind schedule when it comes to expanding our public transportation system, so bikes are a great addition to that during the day when you're allowed to bring your bike on, but just in general, it gives you an alternative. Get out of that busy streetcar. So, according to research out of U of T's Cycling Think and Do Tank, 45% of all trips in Toronto are under, 40, or under five kilometers, and 65% of those short trips are taken by automobile. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that five kilometers is, in a flat city is pretty bikeable. That said, it does depend on what part of the city you're in, right? Some parts of the city are less bike friendly, a little more hostile territory. So unfortunately for now, uh, it's only the brave few that can take advantage of a bicycle for transportation in those parts of the city. That said, 
more and more people every year, women and men, are starting to use a bicycle for transportation. Uh, according to some new numbers from counts conducted by the City of Toronto Transportation Department, they compared between 2010 and 2013, we went from 38% women riding to 48%. Now that's almost parity, and that's a really important shift. More women are riding. I'm one of them, obviously. Um, another remarkable count conducted that same year in 2013, again comparing to 2010 numbers, on the College Street bike lane right around Spadina, uh, in the 5 to 6 p.m. westbound rush hour, there was a 67% increase in bike ridership and bikes actually outnumbered cars. That's kind of amazing. People like bike lanes, so that's where they go. So we've got all kinds of different people running errands on Bixie bikes, bike share, or Toronto bike share, I should say, uh, in downtown. We've got CEOs riding fancy bikes to work, and we've got high-end fashion retailers uh, selling you the bike lifestyle in their shop windows. I'd say that bikes have shifted from subculture to fully mainstream. So we've got more people riding than ever, but many more people are still hesitant. And there's some good reasons for that. So yeah, winter's an issue. We can acknowledge that. Some of us are crazy enough to ride throughout the year. February was rough, but that, that was my outfit. I managed. Uh, it's not for everyone, though, and that's OK. But either way, we've got nine out of 12 months that are totally bikeable. Um, and just for the record, I was probably warmer than you were waiting for the streetcars because I had my engine running and of course I had zero flesh exposed. So that worked out pretty well. And then of course, what about needing to look presentable at our destination, right? We've got to go to a meeting or a social event. I rode here today. You don't need special gear to ride a bike, although I do have my bike shorts under here. So <laughs> preserving my modesty on the bike, it's a good thing. Uh, sorry. It's my little secret, but now you all know. Uh, cycling doesn't have to be a high-speed race. Going at a slow, steady pace can be perfectly fine. You don't have to get all sweaty. But of course, I carry a hand fan as well in the summer, so when I get off my bike, I can fan myself. And it's a good shade as well, but anyway. If you have a longer ride and you do have to sort of work up more of a sweat, you can always roll up your clothes, pack them, and give yourself some time at the end uh, to get ready before your meeting or whoever, you know, getting to work or whatever it is. And then, of course, carrying things. That's another point of concern for people. How do you get the kids and the groceries home? How do you run errands uh, and carry things along? But it's amazing what you can haul on a bike. I mean, that dog looks pretty happy. <laughs> and so does the kid. But we've got more options than ever when it comes to carrying things. So from baskets and rear racks, panniers, and um, you know, front and rear loaded cargo bikes. There's just so many options now available for carrying things. And then for longer distances or extra weight or hills, you can add an electric assist. So really, the, we've got good options and you can do just about anything by bike and you wouldn't believe some of the things I've carried on this one. But the number one barrier to entry, of course, is fear of sharing the road with cars and being vulnerable to injury or worse. And that's fair, that's absolutely fair. But just look at the people that are doing it every day. Even for those who've been riding regularly, it's still a daily act of courage to ride a bike. It's just, you know, how it works, but it's worth it. The rewards of being self-propelled are absolutely worthwhile, and it's actually kind of addictive to know that you can get from door to door, you've got parking at the other end, you've got predictable travel times, and you're having fun for the most part. Every once in a while there's funny stuff that happens on the road, but you also get to be more connected to your city. Uh, North American cities are, of course, vastly different from the cycling havens of uh, cities like Copenhagen or Berlin. They've properly incorporated bicycle infrastructure into the cities over the last 40 years. We're mostly riding on streets that were built for the rapid throughput of motor vehicles. So it can be a little nervous making. And yet, even with that minimal bike infrastructure that we do have, tons of people are riding. There's still thousands of people riding daily in cities across North America. In the warmer months, with the, when the most bikes are on the street, we actually have safety in numbers. Having more bikes on the street increases awareness of drivers that bikes are there, and it just, yeah, there's an expectation that bicycles will be there. That said, you don't want to ride in the door zone because people get distracted. So. Do we know what the door zone is? No. Okay, so the door zone is uh, beside a car. 
Um, it's the, the swing of the car door. So you don't want to be within, a, you want to stay about a meter away from a car door because any car door can open at any time, as I've noticed, and I have a dent in my leg to prove, but that shouldn't scare you off. That's once in my entire <laughs> lifetime of riding. Anyway, it's not a terrible dent, but I notice it. Anyway, infrastructure. Um, so it might not always feel like it, but we actually are making progress. Uh, the city of Toronto is one of many North American cities that have adopted a complete streets policy. And a complete streets policy is exactly that. You have to take into account all road users when building or refurbishing a street. So it hasn't, it's not exactly policy yet. They're in the process of putting it in place, but that's a really important step in the right direction. And despite this happening at a snail's pace, we're in fact making yearly improvements to our infrastructure. We now have um, physically separated cycle tracks in some places, on-street bike parking corrals, contraflow lanes. I have one on my street, it's fantastic. And then we actually have a brand new bike plan on the way, which is really gonna look at improving the network and expanding it. So getting over your fear can lead to experiencing feelings of freedom, autonomy, and a real sense of accomplishment. And of course, adding a bicycle to your transportation uh, sort of option really allows you to see your city in a whole new way. You can see the connections between places and you run into friends along the way, which is kind of nice. Interestingly, as a woman and thinking about fear in a different way, I often feel safer on my bicycle in certain parts of the city than I would if I was walking. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So cities across uh, North America are in transition and we're slowly adapting our streets to accommodate and welcome bicycles. This adaptation can be, uh, is only happening because of two key things. There's the cycling advocates who have been working tirelessly for years to make that happen. And then there's the political champions that understand the value of investing in bicycle infrastructure. Where there is a political will, there is always the financial means. And it actually doesn't cost that much to put in place bike infrastructure when you look at all other forms of transportation. Um, I like to reference Roger Geller from the Portland Department of Transportation. They put in their entire network of cycling infrastructure for $60 million. And that's the equivalent, that's 60 miles, sorry, um, no, pardon me, $60 million for approximately 300 miles of bike infrastructure, which is equivalent to about one mile of freeway. That's, that's remarkable. So imagine how many bike lanes and how many incredible bike share stations we could have across the city for even a quarter of the 920 million that's being proposed for the hybrid option of the gardener. Right? If you put it into context, it, it's pennies to, put, to make our city bike friendly. And there's certainly demand for this stuff. Um, a recent poll done in 2014 by Share the Road Cycling Coalition uh, suggested that, well showed, pardon me, not suggested, polled people, 32% of Ontarians are riding, but 54% of Ontarians would like to ride more. They'd like to be on their bikes, but safety was the number one concern. According to research compiled by the League of American Bicyclists, um, from 2000 to 2013, 64% increase in cycling in the US and 105% increase in cycling in cities that were bike friendly. So that's cities that have put in place bike infrastructure and are welcoming bike riders. Importantly, bike infrastructure serves all road users, not just citizens on bicycles. By adding bike lanes and cycle tracks, you're adding predictability to the roadway and you're increasing the capacity of those roadways to carry more people. Um, everyone has a dedicated space, so the road works more predictably, which kind of dials down the fear, and, and what comes out of fear is, is anger often enough, so it helps everything work better. With the population density of cities increasing, there's just no more room on the road for cars. Uh, we really need to be investing in alternatives that allow us to move greater numbers of people by making better use of the scarce amount of road space that we have. So cycling advocates across North America have been working on this for years. We've certainly got momentum, but now is not the time to stop pedaling. We've got to double down, in fact. And you, all in this room, can help. If you haven't already, you might want to consider joining your local cycling advocacy organization and supporting their work. Um, maybe you could let your local representatives know that you're interested in what they're doing to make the city more bike friendly and that you'd support them in that action. Uh, many politicians are worried about being, being vulnerable at the next election or amongst their peers, their colleagues on city council, uh, and they need you know, pressure and, and support from their constituents uh, before they're willing perhaps to you know, try something new or to, to vote away from the status quo. 
Speaking of being vulnerable, while listening to Brene Brown's talk about emotional vulnerability, has anyone seen it? Well, for me, I made the connection to the vulnerability that we choose when we get on a bicycle, right? You're more exposed to your city. But I think that the way you expose yourself on a bike and the way you connect to the city actually allows you to regain some of your own personal power. Um, there's an exhilaration, a sense of accomplishment. You're self-propelled in this big city machine. And that's actually really invigorating and it, it, it's incredible how it starts your day or ends your day or just the way it makes you feel overall that you can do your thing in your big city and you're not relying on any other system other than perhaps the roadway system which would ideally work better with more bike infrastructure. Um, so, are you willing to make yourself a little more vulnerable in order to experience greater personal freedom? Bicycles are efficient, elegant vehicles. They allow freedom of movement and healthy, environmentally friendly, and cost-effective, predictable travel times. Almost anyone can ride a bike, and all, peop all, all people are welcome on a bicycle. It doesn't matter what gender or status or physical capacity you have. I'd suggest that bicycles are the key to the future livability of our cities. And what do we want our cities to look like in 20 years, in 10 years even? Let's dream big. Imagine your city with 50% fewer cars, um, a healthy population that gets enough exercise, a transportation system that uh, allows everyone to get around safely, doesn't pollute the planet, and that all are welcome in. Others have already proven that this is possible. So as I said, I really truly believe that bicycles are the key to the livability, the future livability and present livability of our cities. And I hope you enjoy the ride.